just to be clear to the watchers and the listeners that what we're talking about, obviously, is emotional boundaries. We're not necessarily physical boundaries, okay? Um, so this is like a psychological thing, like in, in a boundary, I guess we're just saying is kind of like where, where you begin and I end and where, where I end and you begin. And it's, or perhaps you should define it for us. How would you define an emotional boundary? Oh, I think you've got it exactly. It's a relationship. Okay. And, and it's always moving. Okay. It's dynamic. You know, so that's what makes it really hard is that where you feel comfortable one day with your boundaries, what feels like a yes for you can change. Yeah. You know, it's a moving, changing kind of river. So you have to stay tuned in with yourself because suddenly something that you've said yes to 10 years later, you're like, that is a no for me now. And you have to be open to the fact that you're growing and you're changing. And as you grow and change, your boundaries are always moving, but you want to stay connected to them so that you're in touch with what is true for you now. Well, I think that challenge, I, I just, my hat is off to you with your work because really the challenge here, what we're talking about is responsibility. We're delving in the world of communication. We're delving in the world of love and fear and people um, ignoring their boundaries for fear of losing love and attachment and relationships. And perhaps it's easy for you as a therapist who's objective that you can, you know, you can see outside someone better than they can see them themselves, right? It's very clear what your inner compass, as you call it, I call it intuition, is telling you but to your client or the person, they might even know their inner compass is telling them that, but they, they just stuff it down. They numb it out. They distract it. They beat it down because they're afraid of what it's telling them because of what that means. It can mean change. It can mean they have to change a job, a relationship, which is a fear of losing love, acceptance, support, exactly. financial support. So tell us how do people deal with that aspect of I not the listening way, to your boundaries. I love the way you're wording this because think about everything you just said. I hope listeners like really got that, all that fear. Right. And somehow we think it's easier to cling to our fear than it is to trust our boundaries. And I cannot imagine like when we break it down as simply as you just put it, Amy, would you rather be in relationship with your fear and have your fear guide your life? Or do you want to trust your inner compass and listen to your yeses and nos? And yeah, it is scary. I mean, honestly, I, I still have a hard time saying no to certain people or saying no and letting go of certain things because um you know when i establish that boundary i go through some fear of disappointing people um people not liking me what if i have no more work i like to take the month of august off nice um right that's nice <laughs> so i take august off i mean that means that any calls or requests or anything, even big things that come in, I say no to. And that means, you know, will I ever have work again? Will that ever, you know, I have to go through these fears just like everybody else, except the difference is, is I know that, that once I've said it, there's something like a relief. And so I, that's, that's your confirmation that it is a no, yes. I know that there is relief. relief. So even if I'm scared, I don't let fear decide where my boundaries are. Nice. And I don't want you to let fear decide where your boundaries are because right. our fear is not a good compass. Our fears can give us information, but then we have to, you know, we have to, it's kind of like reading Wikipedia. I mean, sometimes wow. it's accurate, sometimes it's not. <laughs> You know, so your fear is sometimes your fear is a good signal. It's an important mm -hmm. signal to listen to, and it's giving you very helpful information. And sometimes your fear is just full of hooey ha, and it's not giving you anything useful. So you don't want to use it as your compass. You want to allow it to give you some information, but then you really have to sort out, is this real? Does that make sense? Do I really want to spend my life trying to please everyone? Um, yeah, some people may not like me. Some people may not even love me and that's okay. 